Hey guys, welcome back to the House of Audience. For this episode, I thought in the education segment we would take a look at the difference between your single factor and your dilute audience. On the show bench, we're seeing a lot of the guys getting the two mixed up. Um, and you know, particularly the white breast and the lilac seems to be causing, in terms of the, the breast color, seems to be causing the guys a lot of trouble and they often wrong class. So that will be the education segment for today. And then I thought we would also have a quick catch up with the Majestic Bloodline. We've got some checks that have been run um, that are about a week and a half away from, from fledging. So yeah, there's some, some movement in that happening there. And the general sort of trend in the, the bird room is, is that we're starting to take off boxes now. Uh, particularly those that were first year uh, breeders that didn't breed successfully for us. But our second years are really starting to come to the forefront now. Uh, we've got a couple of nests that have eggs in it that I have no doubt the chicks will be uh, hatched and raised by the parents. And we've got a few that are due for ringing uh, fairly shortly. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of movement starting to happen in terms of that stuff. And, and I expect to finish the season really strongly in terms of that side of things. So yeah, it's encouraging times and it's always nice to see some chicks out on the perch. Speaking of which, in this cage over here, and that's why I'm focused on this side of the room today, that yellow rum pair that we're raising the two um, chicks from the blue side of it, they were three originally, unfortunately one fledged a couple of days too soon. And I put it back in the nest, but it hopped out again just before I switched off the lights and I didn't see it. So when I came in the next day, unfortunately, it had died from being alone um, in the cold. So, yeah, a little bit of tragedy there, but the other two have now fledged and are on the perch. The dilute, however, I am a little bit concerned about. It's a little bit fluffed up, as you can see in this sort of close-up. Uh, and while the normal trick is uh, seems fine and is behaving normally so what i've done is i've put a bit of medicine in the water it's just a general sort of tonic um, and aid and then we'll see in another day or two's time sort of where they're at and i'll take it accordingly but yeah so it's nice to have them on the perch the parents are actually on their final clutch at the moment i'm hoping that they will raise them. So I'm going to leave the eggs with them this time and, and let them raise their own. And then the yellow rum pair will then raise their final clutch for the year, um, which they've started laying. And I wouldn't have actually let them go that final round um, because I normally stop at two rounds. But the hen, when I checked the box this morning to take it off now that the, the two youngsters had fledged, I found that she had already started laying eggs, so it was a bit too late to now remove the box. So I'm going to leave her, let her finish laying the clutch, and I'll let them breed this final round. She's still generally looking quite good though, and the cockbird is definitely looking um, in fine fettle. So yeah, I'm going to leave him, uh, at least leave them, to raise this final round. Right, so the the other thing that I wanted to talk about today is, before we move on to the education segment and the Majestic, was the new feeders that have arrived uh, courtesy of Nifty Nest. So, yeah, it was really um, a nice surprise to get all 28 of these delivered this week. Um, what I like about them, and that's why Ruan or how we designed them uh, was that we're going to put in the soft food feeder feeding tray that slots in over there and it clips into place with a little ridge at the bottom uh, which I thought was a really clever little add-on and then you fill them from the top and when they in my box cabinets you'll be able to see what the level of the seed is doing through the window on the side so it's got it's a split feeder so i've got the two halves the egg food on the one side and the seed on the other it has also gone ahead and made me left and right the idea being is that i want the soft food draw closer to the exit um or the door should i say so that it's easy for me to top up the soft food as that could be done daily whereas the seed portion i might only need to top up once a week so yeah the left and right makes a lot of sense from that perspective and yeah i'm really really chuffed how these 3d printed feeders actually turned out 
Uh, so a big thank you to Ruan from Nifty Nets in terms of that one. Right guys, since we had a catch up last week on the commoners, I thought this time, well not last week, two weeks ago, I thought this time we would have a look at what's happening with the Majestic Bloodline. Like I said to you, the first year pairs let us down in a big way, um, but now that the second year birds are starting to come into effect, um, there's definitely a big improvement in terms of the number of chicks that we're ringing and the overall success rate in the bird room. So, this particular box, even though it's with a red headed pair, is actually Odo and Josephine's chicks. Um, I did an egg spot because I didn't think that the red heads would raise the chicks properly, and I really wanted some of the, the youngsters. So those, their eggs are a lot newer, they haven't hatched yet with Odo and Josephine, they're about to, but these ones are at the point where I can bring them. So the, the chicks from Odo and Josephine, we've got two of so far for the season. I'm not that worried about trying to be more of them because remember they were one of our pairs that you guys know well from the beginning of the season and we, uh, we were still filming last year and they were our last pair to breed so we had seven chicks from them last year so with these two that'll take us up to nine so I'm probably going to use them for fostering other birds like our yellows and that kind of thing um, with their final round instead of trying to get more of the same essentially. Our uh, black headed pair down the bottom there, um, they've laid some eggs, they're also not first year birds, they're second and the cock's a third year bird, so I have no doubt that we will have some success with them, and then we can sort of see where we're at in terms of our pairings and that. Louis and Charlotte, you will remember that we gave them, they were in this cage, I've since moved them to the new box cages, but uh, some of the chicks are in here. Um, you'll remember that our first round with them, they laid four eggs and unfortunately they didn't feed them because they were both new, uh, they were first years. Their second clutch, they fed them but unfortunately we had a power failure at the sort of round about the, the mark where the parents leave them unattended at night. And as a result, because of the lights going off so much earlier and I wasn't home that day to put on a battery based light, they didn't get that last feed and it was just too long um, to see them through until the morning. So unfortunately we lost all that round. But both those rounds were four eggs each. So we had the option of going a third round, um, but I thought I'd rather move them to the new boxes and get them used to that for next season. So yeah, uh, they do have access to the box in the new cage as you saw in uh, the previous episode. But the idea isn't necessarily to breed them, it's more to get them accustomed to the cage and that kind of thing in preparation for next year so that they know where the nest box is and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where we're at on, in terms of them. So all in all, I fully suspect we're going to have some chicks from each of our head colours, even though we would, we're not going to end up with the volume that I would have liked because of the fact that our, a lot of our first years let us down. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at. And um, yeah, we'll catch up with them on the final episode of the season. Um, I have some other things in mind for the next two shows. And then the third show, uh, episode 24, will probably be where we wrap it up for this season. Um, and then we'll take a break for a month and then sort of start again um, in October. Alright guys, for the education side of the show today, I uh, wanted to discuss something that I've seen a lot of on the show bench um, and also it would affect your breeders in terms of the decisions they're making around their pairings and that kind of thing. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm referring to being able to tell the difference between your single factor and your double factor yellows. Now it might sound like it's a simple thing, but there's a lot of sort of nuances if you like that I think are causing the guys some trouble and that is why we're having so many birds that are wrong class on the show bench where the guys are putting them in as single factors and they actually double and vice versa right so 
My own pair, uh, or double factor male, should I say. Unfortunately, um, he's not behind me today for me to refer to, so I'm going to put up slides. Um, he's in a show cage as there's a show coming up this week that for once I can participate in as I'm not doing a judge's test myself. So yeah, it'll be nice to actually be on the show bench for a change this year, um, opposed to just uh, being involved in the, the judging side of things. But anyway, coming back to today's discussion. So looking at the first slide, we have a normal um, black-headed cock, in the middle we've got a single factor and then on the right hand side at the bottom you have your double factor now you'll notice that the, the back of the bird in the single factor is not yellow and it's not the normal green it's like a lime green and that is typical of a purple breasted now i say the purple breasted for a very good reason and we'll come to that shortly but just that you can see that this is common throughout regardless of head color i'm going to show you the orange headed birds now you can see once again the single factor is definitely that lime green color and the same would go for your red head so yeah you can see the red headed is that lime green color now <clears throat> The hen birds, on the other hand, regardless of the head color <coughs> and um, regardless of the breast color, will be yellow or green. You don't get a dilute uh, or um, sort of that lime green effect that you would have in your cock birds. And there's good reason for that. So the hens they it's kind of like human beings but the, the opposite way around so with human beings your male of the species has an x chromosome and a y chromosome whereas your female of the species has two x chromosomes with birds it's the other way around it's the uh, male bird that effectively carries two of the same chromosome whereas the female uh, they talk of a z and a w so it's a little bit different to human beings but it's all you need to know is, is that a hen can only ever carry a single copy of the yellow. So she is either a yellow bird or she is a normal green bird. She will never be a double factor, um, even though it looks like she's a double factor. Okay, and that's very important when you're referring to, to you know, if you're trying to pick up the difference um, between the birds. All right, so now coming back to the cocks. The story would be really simple if that's where it ended. Um, and that your single factors were that sort of lime green color and your double factors were yellow. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. And I say that because of the effect that the lilac and the white breast has on the back colors in the case of your yellow birds. So the next example I'm gonna show you is of a lilac breasted bird. And what we would have hoped is that your single factor, like on the purple breast that I'm showing you in the middle, that's not a lilac, the purple breasted bird in the middle, you would have that lime green. Instead, you don't get that. You can see here yeah, the two examples of the single factors I've put up where the back color is almost yellow or pure yellow. Um, the, is a slight color difference between that and a double factor on the yellow but to the untrained eye it's a yellow bird and therefore a lot of keepers and show guys showing you know for the first time and that kind of thing get the two confused they think because it's yellow it must be a double factor because they're looking for that lime green and on your lilac birds and your white breasted birds it's not the case so yeah, you can see the same thing on the white breasted bird where the single factor is a lot more yellow than on the purple breasted birds and the double factor would then be your pure um, yellow. So your cleanest yellow in terms of double factor would be on your white breast and also your single factor but even your lilacs you can get some very very clean yellow birds and that is where most of the guys get caught out all right what is the best way to tell if you can't rely on the back color so in the next slide you will see that if you look under the chin 
of the two birds, well, not under the chin, under the bee, should I say, on the throat area of the two birds, you will notice that the one on the left has a bit of grey under the beak, leading down to where the breast is of the bird. If you look at the one on the right, that same area is pure white. Now, I have seen a little bit of bleed through on the turquoise that's normally behind the mask of the bird. So, although that is a, a good way to pick up if it's a single factor or double way, uh, factor, it's not 100% reliable. What's far better is what I'm showing you now when you look at the throat of the bird. And on a single factor bird, it will be gray. And on a double factor bird, it will be white. And that is your most reliable way to tell the difference between the two. So yeah, I hope that's, that's helped you guys pick up the difference. And yeah, um, you know, when you are entering competitions, just look very carefully so that you put them in the right category because it's the one thing that can have you sort of disqualified, if you like, on the show bench is if you enter the birds incorrectly. So it's quite important that you, you take that extra little bit of time and just make sure that you are categorizing them correctly. Now that's it for the education portion of today's show.